An overhead crane that has no power is essentially a very big coat rack. So which electrification do you need for your business? Which one works the best and how do you compare one to the other? Well, welcome back to Cranes 101 where we talk about all things crane electrification. Devin here from Mozilla Companies, and today we're covering crane electrification. In this video, we'll cover the three most popular types of crane electrification, the pros and cons in each, and then we'll wrap up by talking about the best way for you to determine what's the best for your business. To help me tell this story, I reached out to the guy that I made tell me about electrification in the first place. Matt Van Taggy is a draftsman for Progressive Crane, and there's nobody else I'd rather have explain to you the different ins and outs of crane electrification. And we started at the very, very base level with what are the different types? Some of the more popular ones would be conductor bar, flat cable festoon, or a cable reel. And they could all be used in conjunction together or they can be uh, used separately. Typically, runways, we put conductor bar on them. Bridge cranes, will put flat cable C-track to bring power out to the hoist and trolley and control back. And we would use a cable reel uh, for possibly a below the hook device. Uh, we run it from the trolley down to the uh, below the hook device. But these are all interchangeable. At Progressive Crane, we try to come up with the most cost effective solution for the application. So really, it comes down to two things, cost and application. Now, the more I work with Matt Van Taggy, the more I got to see his process, and consistently, he would always try to save you money first. But the thing that applies to everything is that safety will override cost, especially when there's a hazardous work environment. So if it's a uh, hazardous area, cable reels sometimes work a little better uh, because those could be made explosion proof or flat cable. Whereas conductor bar, that's open conductors. It's not used in that kind of application. They all have their pluses and minuses. Conductor bar, you would never use that in a hazardous location. Uh, festooning has stack up, but it's good for those kind of applications. And it's very inexpensive and easy to maintain. Uh, whereas a cable reel, they do have mill duty type, they do have explosion proof, uh, but here again, it's not the most cost effective way to uh, bring power to a runway or bring, bring power to a crane unless the application calls for that. Most often uh, you're going to see conductor bar on runways, not that it can't be on bridge cranes. Uh, most of the time you're going to see flat cable festoon on a bridge crane and as far as the cable reel goes it has its applications like I said before below the hook devices, gantry cranes, uh, or uh, monorail systems in uh, hazardous areas, but they can all be used in conjunction with each other or they could be used separately. And uh, it just comes down to application and cost and uh, you know the preference of the customer sometimes. So Matt told me that adding on to or extending your current electrification is a cinch. No problem at all really. The only challenge really comes down to when you're completely changing your electrification from one style to another. As far as conductor bar goes, that's relatively easy. Uh, you can add a fourth bar because a lot of the older systems were only required, OSHA only required you to have three bar. So adding a fourth bar or adding uh, another 100 foot or whatever does not, uh, does not cost a great deal. It's, it's not a lot of uh, labor either. However, if you are changing flat cable or uh, cable reel, it becomes a money issue uh, because that all has to be replaced usually as far as like flat cable. You don't want to splice that stuff if possible. If you do, and it can be done, but uh, we prefer not to. So we would just change out all the festooning. Now this is really where your estimator or lifting specialist comes in. A big part of that beginning negotiating process is figuring out what your application is, what the working environment is, and which method of electrification will work best there so you don't have to switch them later on in the future. The sales or the estimator would go in knowing the application or coming out with a good idea of what they had to provide the customer. So yeah, this is usually taken care of on the front end. 
However, there are times where the engineering department will get involved. So Matt Van Taghi has been working in this field for over a decade, and I figured being a draftsman, you'd probably get used to or have a favorite design that you like to use one over the other. So I asked him if he had any preferences. I look at the application and come up with the best cost-effective solution for the job, and that's typically how I approach it. All these systems are very good. They have their applications, obviously, and they do have some uh, downfalls, each of them, but uh, all these systems are meant for cranes, so no, I do not look to one over another. Hopefully this video was able to help you better understand crane electrification. If you like this video, definitely check out the rest of our Cranes 101 series, and while you're there, consider subscribing to our channel. It's a brand new year, we're gonna make a whole bunch more content, and I don't want you to miss out. If you're considering buying your first overhead crane or adding another one, we've developed a resource specifically for you. If you click the link above, it'll take you to our 10 things to consider when buying an overhead crane checklist. It's free and made 100% with you in mind. If you'd like to schedule a consultation with one of our lifting specialists, don't hesitate to reach out. They'd be happy to help you however they can. Thank you for watching.